You're listening to the Packernet Podcast Network. It's only a kick, a jump, a block. It's only a serve. It's only a tackle, a run. It's only for the fans. After all, it's only pressure. You got this. Adidas. This episode is brought to you by Hyperice, the leader in advanced warm-up and recovery technology. They have tons of innovative products, like Venom heated wearables to help soothe sore back muscles, Normatec compression boots to speed up recovery and increase circulation, and Hypervolt massage guns to improve mobility. Loved by athletes like Naomi Osaka and Erling Holland. Try them yourself. Get 10% off your order with the code MOVE at hyperrice.com. You, you feel this, this nervousness on the phone there? Sir, I've been trying to make an urgent phone call up there. I don't think it's something I want to do on an overseas phone. You got to make some phone calls. Hang up the phone. Prank caller. Prank caller. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome once again to Packernet After Dark. This is the call-in show of the Packernet Podcast Network. If you'd like to call in, if you'd like to participate in the show, please feel free to do so. The phone number here is 608-501-0718. New callers go directly to the front of the line. We don't have any, so let's see what Aaron is all about. Hey, Ryan. This is Aaron. Hi. As you know, you probably just said it. But anyways, yeah. Um, you know how Christian Watson is really fast, right? Yeah, I get it. But he is not as fast as the media flipping the narrative with <laughs> Jordan Love and Justin Fields. How about that? It, it, literally, like, what was it, three, four weeks ago, it was Justin Fields is going to be the MVP and – and Jordan Love sucks and whatever. And then now it's every nobody's taking it taking accountability of being like, hey, I said Jordan Love was bad. Right. I'm wrong. There he could be good. No, they're all either they're saying that most of them I shouldn't say everyone's not saying this, but any but most media members are just acting like they never said Jordan Love sucks, they never said anything, they just acted like everything's normal and whatever and moved on. But now they're just straight up attacking Justin Fields and yeah. the Bears and they're talking about how the Bears just absolutely suck. And um they're talking about how he's not a taking accountability and making it seem like he's blaming everything on his coaches and his old line and and it's just like I'll go watch the press conferences on my own. I can't believe I'm actually going to go watch a Bears press conference because it's like if Justin Fields is actually blaming his coach and his line and everything for the failures of the Bears, like it, like the media is making it seem, that team is even in a worse place than I thought because you can't have the leader of your team blaming other players like that. And so I want to go see if Justin Fields has taken his accountability and saying, hey, yeah, man, I've not been playing the best. Or if he, it's, he's just blaming holding penalties and false starts on everything. Um, and so I'm going to go take a look at the, the Bears press conference. Like, yeah, like I said, I can't believe I'm saying that. But it's just, like, amazing how fast the media has flipped its narrative entirely. And additionally, um, it's – I literally dropped my thought as I was about to say it. I have 30 seconds. Um, <laughs> what was I thinking? Shoot. Um, what do you got? I'll call back if I think All right. it. I'm not going to take up any more of your time. All this good. happens way too much. Uh, ADHD life. What's up? Okay. Um, yeah. Bye. Happens to me all the time. I'm just fortunate enough to have a pause button so nobody can notice. I mean, you notice once in a while. If I find my thought quick enough, I'll just let it ride. But if I have, like, one of those moments, I just hit the old pause button and sit there and zone out and then go watch YouTube and then, like, oh, wait, yeah, I got to do a podcast. And then I come back and I do it. Yeah, I get the ADHD thing, man. Never was diagnosed, but, I mean, it's at this point in my life, I just I know it's a thing. Except maybe the H part. It might just be ADD. There's, there's no H. <laughs> 
But yeah, I mean, I mean, Fields didn't like throw the team under the bus necessarily. I mean, he he did. It, what he said was, you know, why are you thinking too much? He said, I'm thinking too much. Why are you thinking too much? Coaching. I mean, that's it is what it is. I mean, him saying that he didn't say it is nonsense, or that anybody took it out of context is nonsense. Now, you know, did he say other things, and did he, you know, put the onus on himself and and all that, and kind of. Was there a little bit more context to it? Yeah, but he still said that. And again, he, as I mentioned before, he went back and apparently apologized to his coaches for saying that. So it's it's not as though that didn't happen. But yeah, I mean, there's there's no accountability. I wish I had taken better notes of every single. I thought I was um, every single person that said Jordan Love was going to be bad, Justin Fields is going to be good. Um, I think it's too early to start busting out the Jordan Love um, stuff. But as far as Justin Fields, I, I'm I have no problem unloading those. But uh, yeah, it is annoying because there's just there's no satisfaction in it. You feel like, man, I can't wait if if uh, Jordan Love ends up looking pretty good, I'm gonna slam these people. And then by the time it happens, it's like, who the heck said that? I can't remember. Like the only one that comes to mind is Richard Sherman for some reason. It's but the only one I remember that basically said he wasn't going to be good. I, th- I think. I don't even know. I, I It's just, it's a lot of the uh, people who are, seem to be just very pro Rodgers. Like, Sherman is a good friend of Aaron Rodgers. So it's like, you know, screw you guys for being okay with him leaving. So that, it just kind of took that angle. And same with Adam Shine, who I think has vanished off the planet as a result of things that have transpired. It was like a pro Rodgers thing that came out very angrily. And I think certain people were just really upset that Packers fans and the Packers organization were content to move on without Aaron Rodgers. You know, because remember, a lot of the media was basically saying you're headed for a, a, the, the dark ages. You're, you're screwed. And, and we got lectured about, you know, you, you guys have no idea what's about to happen to you. you. You sweet, poor people. You have no idea how bad it's about to be. And then some people took another tact, which was, Oh, you're happy? Then screw you. I hope you burn. You're going to be so bad. You're going to be horrible. It's going to be terrible. It's all the same thing. It's just uh, it's just how you deliver the message. But that's where it came from. It all came from the same place. I think I thought remember the thing I was going to say. All right. Um, oh, yes. That's it. So um, I hope so. You called back. You know how there's like a lot of teams that are starting out kind of bad that are like 0-2, but then a lot of the media and people are like, you know what? It's still the Bengals. It's still the... Uh, whoever else is 0-2 yeah. that have been good in the past. It's like, I forget, whatever. But most of the people are like, oh, yeah, it's still them. They'll get better. Don't worry about it. And here's a thought that I haven't heard yet, is that what if the Packers are only going to get better? Everyone's acting like, oh, yeah, the Packers are just some nothing team and whatever, and they're just still down there. and They're not even getting talked about now that Aaron Rodgers is gone and now that whatever. Um, but – what if what we have seen so far only gets built upon? We start like Aaron Jones and Christian Watson get both get healthy. The veterans start playing up to their old selves rather than down to whatever level we had on the fourth quarter against Atlanta. What if, in the same way that these other teams have the opportunity to get better? What if the Packers have that same exact opportunity to get, to get better and grow? This team could be so stinking good that it's mind-blowing. But, I mean, at the same time, it's like as the same in the same way that they could get better, they could get worse. But I just don't see that happening to a degree because it's just – it seems like Jordan Love is really, like, taking the reins. Mm-hmm. And as he gets more of the reins, it's not like he's going to get worse. Um, as he feels more comfortable within the offense, and as soon as all these other receivers that we have feel more comfortable within the offense, if AJ Dillon can get going within this offense, we're going to be good. And but that seems to be so far from everyone's mind is that it's like, oh yeah, the Bengals are going to get better. And honestly, I forget who else is going into. I don't know why yeah. the Bengals are the only one that's coming to my mind. But it's just like. Vikings. If this team can only keep growing and build upon the failures that we've had and learn to grow together, watch out. That's all I'm going to say. Because it seems like the failures that we've had so far 
can be easily remedied. And they're, rem- they're, if, as long as we don't keep getting injured, I'm going to knock on wood here. Anyway, so that was the point that I had that I just remembered. Um, so, okay, bye. Yeah, and I, and I think that's a good point because I think most people look at it and say, okay, yeah, the Packers kind of jumped off to an early lead, but everybody else is going to catch up, which just sort of assumes that this is what the Packers are. They're going to stay there, but other teams are going to get better. Like the Lions are going to get better. The Vikings are clearly going to get better. And I, and I think the Lions and the Vikings will get better. The Bears are probably going to get better just because I, I can't imagine a team stays this bad all year. It, it seems impossible. But you're right. Why wouldn't the Packers get better? Jordan Love is like doubling the amount of times he's played in the NFL almost every time he goes on the field. Week one, he doubled it. This week, he's going to double that. Two to four, you know? One to two, two to four. And that goes for a lot of the other guys, too. Jaden Reed just had his first breakout game, right? We have not had Christian Watson yet. We had Aaron Jones once, and he was a freaking dynamo. The offensive line has played worse than it has in a very long time, and there's very good reason to believe that they will continue to improve. The defense last week had one of the worst games I remember the defense having in quite a while. To not expect the team to get better, mm, I don't know about all that. And that also includes Jordan Love. I mean, you look at some of the incompletions. I mean, you could say he's an inaccurate quarterback, but I, I, I know for a fact, having seen what I saw, that there should have been more completions. There's a lot of uh, miscommunication going on. You know, one of, one of the early plays in the game, they, they talked about he threw it behind Luke Musgrave. First of all, Musgrave wasn't even looking. So there was clearly a miscommunication there. Second of all, I don't know that he wasn't throwing to Romeo Dobbs on that play. If that's the case, then Romeo Dobbs had very little idea what the heck Jordan Love was thinking. So the miscommunications will decrease. So the completions will get, uh, the completion percentages will get better. So yeah, point well taken. Brian, Chris from Sun Prairie calling. What's up? Excellent rant the other day. Uh, Bears fans have to realize about uh, being delusional is that the NFL and the ownership of their team profits immensely from them being delusional. The yes. offseason is eight months. The regular season is only four months. Off season is where the tickets are sold. It's where the jerseys are sold. They're the third biggest market in the country. They should be recognizing that they are going to be fed a lot of false information to keep their hopes high in the off season. There's too much money to be lost to let them know any shard of truth that might deflate their hype. Talk to you soon. So what it sounds like you're saying is that Bears fans are sheep, right? That are being manipulated because they're weak-minded, right? Is that, is that what you're trying to say? Because it sounds like that's what you're trying to say. And, and if that's the case, very good point. Oh, hey, Ray. Hey, this is a eco call from my balcony in Idaho. Hi. Oh, that's not a photo. Um, I got an idea. Well, by the way, I don't want to talk about last week's game. Uh, All right. like, like Bill Belichick said, it's in the past, right? Overall, I was okay with it. Uh, plus, everyone has called in and made a lot of good comments. So, don't need to repeat all that. How about... Um, how about we do this? Because you know the Bears love running backs. Mm-hmm. Uh, how about we call them? I don't know if you want to call them. I can call them. You know, we figure right. some out. Uh, call them and trade AJ Dillon for Justin Fields. I mean, heck, I like to throw in uh, David back at the area, and uh, we can bring Justin over here, show him what it's like to play for a, a good franchise, and make him our like Cordell Stewart slash running back. You know, random threat who can line up anywhere. Let's face it, the dude has some wheels, and he can run. Uh, he just can never throw the ball. He'll never do a halfback option. Uh, I think that'll help us. It'll. It won't help the Bears, but who cares? You know, they're dumb enough to do that deal. Um, and because uh, clearly Justin Fields has no quarterback future, but I think he could run the ball. You know, hey, they prior. Remember uh, whoever took prior from the. Uh, Ohio State, and they made him a receiver, and he did okay for a minute. So, uh, we can, we can, uh, we can, uh, run old Justin, throw the ball, maybe have him run a kick, uh, kickoff or punts back, you know, some flea flickers or whatever, you know, uh, I, I think he'd do, he'd do pretty good. Uh, 
I want uh, thank you. I want to thank you. Uh, not You're really, welcome. because I used to hate your PFF podcast. They were the worst. I just I'm not a stats dude. I'm like ah, stats, blah 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 blah. They, they don't really mean anything. You can make a stat say anything. You know, I remember one my San Diego Charger friends like, ugh, uh, our quarterback's better than yours. He threw for 500 yards. Well, that's because the Chargers are down by 30 points, and he had to throw the ball. So yeah, whatever. But uh, now after every game, I'm like, I can't wait to listen to PFF. Podcast, see how everybody great is. So thanks for converting me to. Uh, I hate stats. To, uh, I love stats. Nice. Welcome days. aboard. So yeah. Anyways. Uh, so yeah. You know, we'll trade Dylan Bakhtiari for Fields. He can be our 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 slash threat. Who knows how long he can line up a quarterback? Justin could move over to receiver. You never know. They could flip around and then just freak out defenses. I'm all I'm all for that. Because uh, we we obviously have to score 35 points a game to win, and I think you can help us, right? Uh, with all of our other young weapons we got, we'd be pretty awesome. So hey, yeah, that's, that's my idea. Uh, go Petco, and uh, bada bing, bada boom. Well, um, I don't I don't think I want to do that necessarily, but I will say, just for the sake of being able to take Justin Fields away from them. Somebody that Bears fans have been obsessed with. They love the guy. If we brought him in and made him good and used him properly, I don't care if it's at running back or what the the purpose of it is, if we just brought him in and made him good at football and then used him as a weapon to not only help the Packers win football games, but to help continue to beat the living daylights out of the Bears... I mean, I can't think of something that's much better than that, aside from the part when they get the number one pick and then don't get Caleb Williams because he refuses to play for him. Well, I mean, I guess the only thing better than that is if Drake may also refuse. <laughs> like, nope, don't even don't even ask. Talk to Prime's kid. Maybe he wants to go there. It'd be worth it. Just let him play one play and uh, let him rip off like a 60-yard run against the Bears for a touchdown. And then we can we can pull out like some hoses... You know, we can hose down the end zone and let him slide, you know, because Bears fans thought that that was the greatest thing in the world. So we'll have him uh, just do a little little slip and slide action in the end zone just for, you know, fun. Also, I had to call back. Um, my sister-in-law's new husband, who I have not physically met. All right. I'm going to talk to him a lot because he's a, a big football fan. He's a big Saints fan. Uh, they're coming up here. Yep. So we can all watch the Saints Packers game. So if any Packers are listening, well, I'm sorry for all the Packer players and coaches and GMs and uh, you know or other organizational people are listening. Please, can we not crap the bed this weekend? That'd be great. Um, I know the Saints are a strong team. Let's face it. Uh, there's a good chance Carr throws up two or three interceptions, and let's just let's focus on catching interceptions this week. They make a big difference. I don't know how the other team, uh, the rest of their team looks good. I mean, they didn't score a ton against Carolina. Uh, and, uh, you know, let them score some, and they're kind of crap. So I'm still optimistic. I don't know who's coming to play this week. I don't know if Jones is playing or Watson. I know Jones is super important. I Watson, to me, is almost as important. Just him being on the field just stretches everything. Yeah. And freaks out defensive coordinators or just opens up stuff. So, uh. That's all I have to say. So, okay, Packer players, please try to win this week. I got my my brother in law coming up from uh, from the south. Where oh, I'm smoking a brisket, just so you know. Nice. So I'm gonna get it tomorrow. See you. Not let it sit in the refrigerator for a day. I'm making some mac and cheese. It's gonna be good. Uh, and uh, yeah, so brisket and a victory against the Saints. So it's all I ask for. And no more hamstring, hamstring, whatever you call them, tears. Um, and um, no more talk about turf and all that crap. So, hey, anyways, go back, go. I'm out. Peace. Man, you're talking about brisket, and I'm sitting here starving to death. Um, you know what I made for the first time? My own homemade hot sauce. And I'm pretty excited about it. And I don't want to get all bougie and whatnot, but discovering how relatively simple it is and how cheap it is, um, I may be looking to do this like, from now on. Plus, some of these things get expensive, man. You know, I made a little batch. My dad gave me uh, four habaneros. I found a mango at the grocery store. I was like, I don't even know if they have that. I figured I'd get frozen mango if I could even find that. 
They had like three mangoes just sitting there for whoever wanted it. Mangoes are actually pretty good, by the way. I did not think it would be good. It was good. Anyways, so uh, mango, onion, uh, friggin' coriander, which I, I bought brand new. I bought ginger, like actual ginger. I, uh, what, what, what the heck do you got to do? You, uh, you know, peel it. Yeah. Whatever. You get the friggin' bark off of it. Threw some ginger in there, some garlic. And then some uh, green chilies. I think I put too many green chilies in there. It said a half a can, but I'm like, oh, well, how much is a can? I got these tiny little cans. I'm like, well, this tiny can's probably a half a can. And then I tried it, and I'm like, no, I'm guessing those those tiny cans are the standard cans. And I should have done half, but whatever. It still tastes fine. I love green chili. It's a little green chili-ish uh, mango habanero. But anyways, went to the hardware store, got some little squirt bottles and a funnel, like a car funnel. Filled up two bottles full. Got two more bottles, so now I gotta now I gotta find a new hot sauce recipe. I am Jack, and I got a pork butt ready to go, so you know what that means, making pulled pork, which means, shortly thereafter, tacos, thank you very much, got the hot sauce ready to go, man, I'm jacked up, I can't wait, I think, by the way, tomorrow, (laughs) I ignored your whole thing, except for the food part, I don't know what else to add, yeah, I hope they win, for the sake of you not getting made fun of in your own house by your brother-in-law, I want to try to do the, uh, smoking it on the Weber, I want to try to do it all the way through. Or at least part of the way through. <laughs> you can finish it in the oven, I guess. But I haven't done it, just for the sake of being worried about temperature control for that many hours. But I think tomorrow I'm doing it. Get some wood chunks down. Just put a ring around the whole Weber. Hopefully get the right amount. See how she goes. Anyways, why don't we take a quick break? We'll be right back. Nico's got one more for us. Hey, U.S. Cellular customers, I've got good news. So don't hit skip forward just yet. I'm talking about their special customer event, Us Days. What's us days? It means exclusive offers just for their customers, just to say thanks, like up to $1,200 to upgrade to any new phone. No, I didn't just misread that. That's up to $1,200 off. They must really like you. Us days at U.S. Cellular, exclusive offers just for you, just to say thanks. Right now, U.S. Cellular customers get up to $1,200 to upgrade to any new phone. Terms apply. Survivor 46 is here, and so is On Fire, the only official Survivor podcast, and we have a twist this season. The winner of Survivor 45, D. Valladares, will be joining us every week. We're going behind the scenes of the biggest moments, the how and the why things happen, and the strategy and analysis you can only get from someone like me, a Survivor winner. Listen to On Fire, the official Survivor podcast, wherever you get your podcasts. It's Kaylee Cuoco for Priceline. Ready to go to your happy place for a happy price? Well, why didn't you say so? Just download the Priceline app right now and save up to 60% on hotels. So whether it's Cousin Kevin's Kazoo Concert in Kansas City, go Kevin! Or Becky's Bachelorette Bash in Bermuda, you never have to miss a trip ever again. So download the Priceline app today. Your savings are waiting. Go to your happy place for a happy price. Go to your happy price, Priceline. This episode is brought to you by Pepsi Wild Cherry. Pepsi Wild Cherry is bursting with delicious cherry flavor and a sweet, crisp taste that gives you more to go wild for. Getting wild may look different these days, but whether it's opting for a solo Friday binge watch or a big night out, everyone can indulge in their wild side with Pepsi Wild Cherry, also available in Zero Sugar. So grab a Pepsi Wild Cherry and get wild. I had to call back because this is Nico. Uh, yeah, just listen to you. Let Paul's cook. Rants. Okay. I don't know if you have the ability to like rate your rants, but that one is definitely number one. I, I know make that poll, let Paul's cook rant as number one rant ever. Yes. Okay. Maybe the one back in 18 when, uh, we lost to the, uh, I think the Cardinals. The Arizona Phoenix, whoever they're called now. Was that a good that's one? That's right after they, right before they fired Home Fry. Um, that was a good one, but this one was so good. You need to clip this Let Poles Cook <laughs> um, rant and then put it on the packer net just so old, just so Bears fans can just go and say it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still laughing. There's two of us. <laughs> You're talking about everyone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's me. All right. Okay. Okay, I gotta calm down now, so, um, I'm gonna go back. 
I don't have a song queued up to play. Celebration. Like me. But that, that was great. Uh, I mean, heck. Okay, let both cook. <laughs> please, please put that, put that on YouTube. I don't have a YouTube channel, otherwise I would, but someone put it on YouTube and hashtag the crap out of it because people need to hear that crap. All right. <laughs> I'll go back to smoke my cigar on the balcony. So, uh, oh. hey, go back to and let the balls. <laughs> <laughs> we should, we should from now on like end calls and end uh, like is it, what do you call that when you? It's not like it's like the opposite of a greeting is when you're leaving. It's like, all right, let poles cook. It's like uh, peace be with you kind of thing, like the the Catholics say and whatnot. Let poles cook. Have a good day. Just a thought. Back east, Brambo. What's up? Uh, I woke up this morning, and uh, looks like the Bears' defensive coordinator has resigned. Um, and the reasons aren't really great. They're kind of terrible from what I understand. So it seems like Chicago just poured jet fuel on their dumpster fire. I don't know, man. That goat, they still suck. Yeah, it's, it's like I talked about uh, a day or two ago or whatever. Um, it's it's getting to the point now where even I am struggling to muster the strength to like pile on them because it's it's it is about as bad of a collapse of a franchise as I've seen. So it, it, there was a brief period where I was happy and I felt so good and I was elated, like ah, just just all that pent up rage. At stupid Bears fans for saying stupid things, and now I'm watching this collapse, and it's like this is, yeah. I mean, it, it it's almost like I'm um, if you just mention like, hey, Justin Fields sucks, it's like, dude, that's out of line. That's way out of line because <laughs> it's so bad. It's on par with like somebody lost to a season-ending injury, where you just you, you, it's in bad taste to make fun of that. Hey Ryan, it's uh, A A Ron from Eau Claire, and. I am just kind of pontificating on the whole Bears scenario, Justin Fields, the coaches, everything, Um, and uh, reading about how their defensive coordinator just got uh, in some trouble for some unknown reason that at least that I didn't, I couldn't figure out what it was, but had to resign, something going on there. Anyways, um, you know, I kind of can't help but feel bad for Justin Fields and his teammates um, because it seems like someone with Justin Fields' ability could, could have gone on to be a successful player if they were to have the right coaching staff and the right uh, support staff around them, um, like just thinking about Jordan Love. You know, Jordan Love is one of those players that is kind of a, toin, a coin flip in the draft where you go, he's got the ability, he's got some history of, of playing well and some history of playing less than ideal football, but, um, you know, with the uh, personality and character and athletic traits and what he's capable of doing, you know, we think we can develop him. And um, I think maybe we, I don't know, maybe it's fair to put Justin Fields in that category where kind of a 50-50 coin toss depending on how it's handled, um, where maybe if he would have gone to the 49ers, maybe they would have been able to, well, certainly they would have been able to utilize his skill set better. Um, but, um, yeah, I don't know. It's, uh, I don't know, I, I guess I feel myself kind of feeling like what a waste of, what a wasted opportunity for him to have to endure the dysfunction of the organization. It's kind of like the Browns for a long time, how, you know, they just had such a kind of dysfunctional quality to their organization. It was like, 
you, it was just really hard to succeed there if you were even like an average to, you know, good quarterback. So, um, anyways, uh, hopefully, well, that's about all I have to say. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, I mean, it is interesting. You know, you kind of wonder, like, what if what if the Packers did have their hands on that guy? You know what I mean? And what if he was able to sit for three years in Green Bay? I mean, Jordan Love didn't look good coming out of the gate. Is it possible that if Jordan Love, rather than sitting on the bench and learning and, and sitting behind Aaron Rodgers and learning from Aaron Rodgers, um, was just thrown into the fire, would he have maybe not developed the way he has developed? Um, and then maybe remove Matt LaFleur from the equation and plug in, you know, Luke Getze. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe Jordan Love would be the same guy, and maybe Justin Fields could have been something special, which, you know, if you really think about that, imagine Justin Fields playing nearly as well or as well as Jordan Love is playing, but also with Justin Fields' rushing ability, which is always what makes mobile quarterbacks, especially guys like Anthony Richardson and, and Justin Fields, so scary, is that exact idea. But the the point is, there's no way of knowing that. I mean, we could say the same thing about every single bad quarterback. You know, Zach Wilson, what if he had was able to sit behind Aaron Rodgers with the Jets? What if the timing was a little bit different and they drafted him and they decided to go all in and, you know, I, I, whatever. Whatever the backstory is, he gets to sit behind Aaron Rodgers for three years. Could, could he have been a much better? Well, maybe, probably, possibly, or maybe he's just bad. Maybe what they did in college just doesn't really translate to the pros. You know, it's a faster game and it's a much more complex game. You hear college players talk about it all the time, especially non-quarterback positions. But, you know, even I've been hearing it a lot lately as people talk about Justin Fields in particular, about how even their positions were different. You know, you can't just go out and play like in college. You know, in college, it's a lot easier to just go out there and dominate. In the pros, it's like you have to be 10 steps ahead of everything. You know, like at wide receiver, it's just run a route. You know, here's the play. Okay, that's my route. I'm going to go run my route. And the pros is a wide receiver. It's you hear the call and it's you have to immediately know what you're doing. And then as you get to the line, you got to start reading the defense. You have to understand leverage. You got to understand, okay, are they playing man? Are they playing zone? Is he off? Is he pressed? Is he inside? Is he outside? And how am I going to play that? And then, then how do things change? If this guy does this, I need to angle this way underneath the safety, or I need to angle behind the safety, or I need to do this or do that. And I'm not saying none of this exists in college, but the, the, the level of complexity in the NFL is so much higher than it is in college because you, you need that extra little bit. Everybody is a good college player in the pros. That's the point. So how do you get an, how, how do you isolate the best of the best of the best of the best? It becomes the guys that can handle things cerebrally. You know, and some of them, I mean, you, you get guys like, you know, massively elite edge rushers or whatever that could probably still get to the pros and just dominate with athleticism. But those are the guys that are, they're going to be out of the league relatively quick once that athleticism kind of tapers. There has to be a point at which you become much more cerebral. So it's not true that, you know, while he was dominant in college, if he just had a good situation, he'd be dominant in the pros. Maybe it's just not for him. Maybe he just can't handle it. And and the reason for believing that, for, for my sake in particular, is it's the things that he seems to not be able to do. It's not just inaccurate passes when he used to be accurate or whatever. It's the guy can't read a field. He can't get through progressions. He can't read a defense. Like, there, there is just a level of complexity that is in front of him that he has never, ever, ever been able to demonstrate that he can handle. Ever. Brian. Hey. Kyle from Madison. What's up, buddy? What's up, man? Hey, uh, first of all, <laughs> the Bears ran. <laughs> uh, I guess it would have been yesterday or Thursday. Oh, before the game. Uh, just for your ears. Oh, man, that was freaking brilliant. Thank I listened you. to that Bears rant twice that you did. Oh, God, it was freaking... <laughs> it was so freaking... I, I loved every second of it. Like I said, I listened to it twice. Brilliant. But also a little scary that you're, that you're, you're so close to the enemy that you know how they think. <laughs> it's like one of those FBI like serial killer profilers, you know. It's a little weird. That's yeah. like kind of messed up. Maybe could be a serial killer, but but isn't. 
Yeah. They're on the side of the good guys, you know? Like, you know the mind of these deranged Bears fans. <laughs> you're, you're right, you're an edge lord, man. You're right on that edge of, of uh, falling into the abyss and, and staying on, on the side of good. But that was fantastic. Thank you. Um, I wanted to just go back to the play calling. I know I called a couple times about uh, LaFleur's play calling. And I, I just want to make sure I'm clear. Like, I didn't have a problem at all. In fact, in fact I really liked the play calling for almost the whole game. It was just the last, the, the, the second half of that fourth quarter. Sure. When things just came off the rails, you know? Um, and I agree 100% with you about the sneak there. I guess that's my issue. My issue isn't in that second to last drive. My issue isn't run Dylan on first, run on second. That's fine. But have that play call ready. And like you said, don't have a code word for a sneak. Just get up there and do it because, like, right. they're messing around. They're moving people around. The crowd starts getting loud. I don't even understand why they had a word. Like, you're away from home and adult. Like, what a dumb thing to have is a word yeah. that you need to say that no one can hear. And then, like you said, you're not even – you're doing the old school sneak anyway. So, I, I don't know. I'm with you on that. I'm going to move on. I will say, though. I caught some of the uh, J.T. O'Sullivan quarterback school now that I'm, I'm – this is the second week I've watched this. I think mean, second or third week. Really great stuff. So there – if you haven't seen it, there's um, – he breaks down a play, and I believe it's one of the touchdown passes. And he points out the dramatic – the uh, I forget what he called it, but basically acting that LeFleur has clearly oh, made yeah, yeah, yeah. play, where love is pointing at the yeah. safety to try to make him think – that he's identifying him for his receiver, but it's all a ruse. For a block. Really, really interesting, yeah. man. Go check that out. Uh, that's a really cool wrinkle. All right, talk to you later. Go back. Yeah, so for context of that, and that was a good catch by J.T. O'Sullivan, he kind of brushed it off, which, by the way, the, my favorite thing about watching the J.T. O'Sullivan thing at this point is when he breaks down Jordan Love, he does it without kid gloves on. He doesn't treat him like a rookie or an early guy, and, and he... You can tell that this is like high level quarterback stuff because he, he he tries to critique him, but it's different than Justin Fields. It's not, bro, your footwork sucks. Like, we got to be faster in your drops. Like, you got to understand your reads. Like, basic, basic one on one quarterback stuff. When it's Jordan Love, it's much more high level. Like, here's what you need to clean up. Here's what I would have done. You know, I don't really know the situation, but I feel like maybe you could have hit this one instead of this one. It just seems like more, hey, professional quarterback to professional quarterback kind of talk as opposed to, you know, dude, you don't know what you're doing and you suck at this. But uh, anyways, but yeah, that particular play, um, he talked about Jordan Love and he started pointing out, I think it was a linebacker, could have been a safety, I don't know, end zone, it's all kind of close. But he points him out and he's talking to a wide receiver who's coming in motion. I don't remember, or tight end, one of the two. And the idea behind it is he's making that player and the defense in general think that it's a run play. He's pointing him out saying, hey, block this guy. And and in reality, it worked because that guy that got pointed out came crashing in hard. Maybe you would have done that anyways. I don't know. But this is exactly what I'm talking about in terms of that next level kind of thinking where it's not just, okay, you know, what's the play? Just barely knowing enough to be able to get up there and line up and do it. He's up to that next level. You know, again, he's looking off linebacker. He knows where he's going. He knows the play. He knows the defense. That's all done. Boom. The processing is there. It's just, I know all this stuff. What can I do? What's that next level? Okay, so I want to actually move the linebacker because da 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 So I'm going to freeze my eyes here, and then I'm going to throw it over there last second in sort of a uh, semi-no-look pass. Now he's got a pass play where he's picking out people that he needs to be to, you know, move so that he tries to get them to crash down hard. He's not just doing it randomly, like he's just messing with the guy. He wants to move him. So he tells one of his receivers to block the guy, essentially, so that he thinks it's a run and plays it like a run, so that when it's a play and our guy leaks out, the guy that would otherwise maybe be covering him loses a step or two. That's awesome stuff. We'll take a break one more time. We'll be right back. Hey, Ryan. Trucker Bob here. Howdy. I'm going to put my neck on the line so you can rip me apart if you want to. Uh-oh. But just for the heck of it, I want to have at least one phone call where somebody defends Joe Barry. All right. 
let me give you a little history. I'll make my point, and then you can hack away all you want. Joe Barry was hired by Green Bay back in 2021. Main reason is we hired the previous defensive coordinator because of how badly he did the playoffs. So let's take a look at Joe Barry's record. 2021, the last five games of the regular season, the Packers gave up 16 to the Eagles, 24 to the Lions, 16 to the Panthers, 14 points to the Titans, and 16 points to the Bears. That's pretty darn good. I would take that because they had some bad games before that. By the end of the season, that was a decent defense. When we got in the playoffs, they gave up 31 points to Tampa Bay. However, I'd like to remind that that defense pulled in three interceptions in the second half, and the offense didn't move the ball. The offense would have moved the ball and scored some points. We would have won that game, and the defense had done its job. Let's take a look at the 2022 season. The last game of the regular season, the Lions scored 37 points, but that was just the backup since we didn't play many of the starters. Let's look at the five games before that. All wins by the Packers, by the way. The Rams scored 28, the Bears 30, the Ravens 30, then the Browns 22, and the Vikings 10, and that's how we ended our season. Once you got in the playoffs, the 49ers only scored 13 points. My point is this, by the end of the season, Joe Barry's defenses are actually pretty good and have done good jobs, especially in the playoffs, if the offense would just score some points. So that's my point. Is Joe Barry really as bad as everybody makes him out to be? Because by the end of the season, we got a decent defense. They could get it, should get us to the Super Bowl if the offense would just score some points to move the ball late in the game because the defense did set us up for a win. Have fun, Ryan. Trucker Bob out. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to think how best to, I mean, the, the, the number one issue right off the bat is the fact that Okay, let's just assume he does great down the stretch, which really the only evidence for that is 13 points against the 49ers, which would be, I mean, let, let's be fair. I think the main point is he will do a good job or probably will do a good job um, in the playoffs. And the evidence of that is he does a good job down the stretch uh, at the end of the season and... Um, the one game that we played with Joe Barry as defensive coordinator was against the San Francisco 49ers, and the defense only allowed 13 points. I guess these are my couple biggest issues. Um, number one, if, if, if you could tell me 100,000% that despite how bad the defense might be during the season, 100,000% every game played in the postseason, the defense would be elite, it would be worth maybe talking about, but obviously nobody can do that. And there's no reason to expect that that would be the case. And so now we're left with, that's just still unacceptable. You can't just be good the last couple weeks of the season. That's not, that's not good enough, especially with the premise that, um, you know, this is a team that has more than enough talent to be a good football team. Another issue that I have is, you know, um, yeah, in 2022, Let's see, going back one week prior to the bye, it was the Bears, and it was 19 points. But then after the bye, it was 12, 20, 17, and 20. So that's great. But the only reason I was excited about that is in hopes that it would continue this season. And maybe it will, but I would certainly like to see something better than what we saw last week. The other issue, and I know you went through the scores, um, but as I look at 2021, it was not a good stretch down, down the stretch at all. Uh, after the bye week, which again was kind of a late bye week, um, week 13. So starting in week 14, we played the Chicago Bears, who are a terrible franchise, and we gave up 30 points to them. Played the Ravens, gave up 30 points. Played, played the Browns, gave up 22. The Vikings, 10. That's great. But then the Lions, 37 points and a loss. In five games, we gave up 30 points three times. Wildly unacceptable. So, I mean, I, I feel like we're kind of 
trying to like tilt our head and squint our eyes and you know maybe go cross-eyed a little bit to see if we can get the picture to go to 3d i mean it is a massive stretch in my opinion to say the reason we hired Joe Barry was to win in the playoffs. The reason we can believe that he'll do well in the playoffs is because the one playoff game and 2022, the last four weeks, and that as a result, we should just ignore everything else or be okay with just completely subpar play throughout the season. I mean, if that's where you're at, fair enough. But I'm, I'm, if somebody walked into my office, I'm in charge of hiring a new defensive coordinator. Or, or possibly, let's say, whether or not to fire Joe Barry and he walks into my office and he goes, look, I'm not a regular season guy, straight up. Like, I don't know what to do in the regular season. I'm not going to be able to help you. But if you guys can drag me through week 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, I can probably start to figure it out. And then by weeks 15, 16, 17, 18... We can probably put together a valiant effort. And then if we get into the playoffs, despite my negligence, I'm confident that we will be the defense that should have been playing all year, but I failed to provide. I'm confident then that, that now we're going to start showing you that. No, if, if, if you can do it, you can do it. If you can't, you can't. First of all, that, that you're, you're immediately fired if that was your pitch to me in my office. But beyond that... If you're telling me you can win in the playoffs, great. The playoffs are tough. If you can win in the playoffs, do it to the Saints. Do it to the Falcons. Okay? Don't tell me about how, oh, if we see the 49ers, trust me, I'll get them. Okay, great. If we see the 49ers, you can go get them. In the meantime, let's handle the, the, the task in front of us. So, you know, I'm, I'm not moved by it. I, I will be sold on our ability to play in the postseason by what we do in the, in the regular season. That's my thought. Hi, Ryan. Uh, this is my impression of if the Chicago Bears finally did the right thing for once and hired Prison Mike to come <laughs> scare them straight. All right. Hey, it's me, Prison Mike. I, I told, I've been told that some people think that being part of the Chicago Bears is worse than being in prison. And I have come to scare you straight. I have come to scare you straight. Anyways, this is how we talk in the clink. Um, the, you, Justin Fields, would be the, the Bella the Ball. The Bella the Ball. Don't throw a pick. Don't throw a pick. Well done. That, by the way, I'm not going to lie. Somebody should steal that to do an office clip, and you might want to hurry because I'm going to start looking into possibly doing that because that's pretty brilliant, and I appreciate the impression. Pretty good. You even got, like, his broken like new york accent thing that he does when he's doing that oh that's picked boom sorry still watching the badgers game hey ryan it's brandon from indiana howdy and i just want to say you were completely right watching the chicago bears slowly burn to the ground is one of the most satisfying (laughs) things i've ever seen i don't have a question that just wanted to make that comment Thanks and have a good night. Yeah, no, I it, it I'm I'm sad that it I wanted it to be more of a slow burn, you know? Like they they still believed. Like if I could have written the script, it wouldn't have been this like massive nuclear bomb that just went off and after one week and especially after two weeks Bears fans are just done and everything's over and everything's terrible and um not how I would have well, maybe it's how I would have written the script, but then I would have probably regretted it. Um, I would have wanted maximal damage at the time, but anyways, no, it's it's it is fantastic. I'm I'm kind of sad that it's going to have lost its luster. Like it's not going to be worth even talking about them. Well, basically, right now, but but in the matter of weeks, I, I I borderline hope that there's a little bit of fire here. You know, let let Justin Fields run for 150 yards. I think best case scenario for my ability to keep fighting with Bears fans and trashing them on this show is like he gets something like a a 55 passing grade, but runs for 175 yards and two touchdowns and throws for a touchdown. It has to be this week, too, because this is when he's going to cut loose. Because then they're going to start to believe again. Now, don't beat the Chiefs. I I don't need that in my life. But I'm just saying. 
Because then we can start fighting again. And I can come in and be like, yep, still not a good quarterback. Oh, what are you talking about? You didn't see the game? You don't know ball? Like, all right, we're back, baby. We're back. Oh, my goodness. Was that just picked off again? Ay, ay, ay. Hi, Ryan. This is Randy from Minnesota. Hi. Calling back for the second time. Uh, where to start? Are you? I don't think our defense is that bad. I think what happened is we just got gassed because our offense could not move the ball. Going out, free and out, free and out, free and out. No wonder they gave up like they gave up in the fourth quarter. I think we'll be okay. I just want everybody to sit back, calm down, and realize this is a year where we're trying things out and seeing what's at what. Anyway, thank you for your time. Go Pack Go. I love your show. Bye. Yeah, I won't relitigate that. I've already addressed that uh, point in that I don't necessarily buy it. But I'm not going to argue with you because I like the point in general from the standpoint of we're going to be fine. And again, I, I kind of think that that's true insofar as we don't play teams like that anymore. I, I think we're in the long term, we're going to have to find a solution to teams that are built that way. You know, if you find a team that has a a solid offensive line, I'll say Atlanta had some problems, but solid offensive line um, and a really potent running attack, you might we we might need an answer. But for today, going up against a team that does not have that, maybe the worst rushing team in all of football, terrible offensive line. Um, yeah, I, I think we'll be okay. I think I still think it's a talented team. Um, and I think we'll be able to find a way to impose our will against the New Orleans Saints. Um, and probably a good portion of the league. In fact, what do we got coming up? Um, Lions, I think, actually might play into our hand a little bit. We'll see what happens with the injuries to their offensive line. But even still, mostly a passing team, unless they're, they, they decide to start running more with their running back and he becomes good. But I think that'll be... Not saying it won't be a tough game. I'm not talking auto win. I'm just talking specifically defense. I think they'll look better against the Saints, against the Lions. Um, Raiders might be a little bit tough, but I, you know, eh, I don't think so. Um, Broncos, I think, will be fine. Vikings will be fine. And I, and again, this doesn't. I just mean like not looking inept. This team can handle the Minnesota Vikings in the way that they play football. They're they're a drop back passing offense. Is Justin Jefferson going to go off? Yeah, probably. I mean, maybe he won't. We did a great job against him last time. But um, Rams, Steelers, Chargers, Lions, even the Chiefs. They're certainly not a rushing team. Giants, Buccaneers, Panthers, Vikings, Bears. I mean, the, the Bears are the only other team that's kind of built that way, and we already handled them. I mean, we, we might be done with those kinds of teams. Now, again, that doesn't mean the, the defense isn't going to have a rough time with some some potent passing offenses, but at least it's going to be strength on strength. And so, you know, we, we might be okay from here on out, given our uh, defense an opportunity to kind of prove what it's worth and everything else. The, the concern is getting into the playoffs and playing a team like the 49ers that are very much an impose their will kind of a football team. You know, they're, they're going to have... Christian McCaffrey run down our throat, except when they pass him the ball. I mean, it's going to look a lot like the Falcons, to be completely honest. They just happen to be a much better offense in almost every facet, with the exception of maybe Christian McCaffrey against Bijan. But I've already made that comparison. I think that those two are actually quite similar. But anyways, I'm going to leave it at that. You guys have a good rest of your day. I will talk to you tomorrow. Have a good one. Bye-bye.